When you're flying as an airline passenger, should you really pay attention to the angle of light coming in through the windows? You know, most pilots like me fly hundreds of flights a year, and when we're sitting in the back, we notice a lot of little details that most passengers don't pay attention to. So when I saw a video claiming to reveal some of those secrets, and I realized a lot of what they were saying is wrong, I figured it's about time that I share the truth about what no one tells airline passengers, including the most important things that pilots actually pay attention to when they're sitting in the back. Headrests were the dirtiest of them all. Flight attendants simply don't have time to change or disinfect them in between flights. All right, they made this video pre-COVID, so a lot of things have definitely changed. First of all, there's a whole team of cleaners that come on the plane in between each flight to do things like wipe down the headrests, the seats, the tray tables, and all that stuff. So I don't think that the headrest is actually the dirtiest place on the plane. The truth is that the seats on the airplane are actually much cleaner than all those seats in the airport terminal that you sit in while you're waiting for the plane. Seven, delay messages. There's probably no air passenger who has never experienced some kind of a delay. Pilots, though, get frustrated when after spending more than a half an hour on the taxiway, they're still in the dark about the reasons for the delay. Okay, this is pretty accurate. For a pilot sitting in the back, they can usually tell when a delay on the ground is taking longer than normal, and that can be very frustrating, especially if they're just trying to get home. However, when it comes to delays, here's the pro tip that pilots use that no one tells you about. Before they even go to the airport, most pilots are going to take a look at an app such as Flight View to figure out the details on where that plane is coming from and if it departed on time. Pilots know that most airlines need about an hour between flights to get the passengers off, clean the plane, and load the passengers for the next departure. So if a plane was late on a previous flight, there's a chance that your flight might be delayed. And if you figure out that information before the airline tells you, there's a chance you might get a head start on getting in the customer service line. 6. In-flight announcements. If you're a regular passenger, it may sometimes seem to you that pilots and flight attendants communicate in another language. So many secret codes they use. But a pilot flying in a passenger seat knows all these phrases by heart. By listening to the crew interaction, they can understand what's happening during the flight and whether something has gone wrong. All right, I promise you that the pilots sitting in the back are not paying attention to the conversation that the flight attendants are having with each other. I mean, it's usually hard enough to hear them when they're asking you for what snack or drink that you want, and the flight attendants aren't using any sort of special code words that they're trying to keep a secret from the passengers about something wrong with the plane. For example, when a pilot hears the cockpit crew announcing, we're now flying through an air pocket, they immediately realize that the plane is about to be jostled up and down due to some turbulence. And for other passengers, an air pocket sounds much less alarming than turbulence. Okay, in my 20 plus years of flying, I've never heard a pilot refer to it as an air pocket. But what they're talking about is pretty true. Airlines don't want pilots telling the passengers that they're going to fly through turbulence because it does sound scary. And so what you'll typically hear pilots say is we're going to experience some rough air or we might have a few bumps during the climb or during the descent, something like that. And here's what else you need to know about turbulence that no one is telling the passengers. First of all, big jets aren't any safer than the smaller jets. And if you want a smooth ride, the best place to sit is in the wing exit rows. But if you can't sit there, I would sit more towards the front of the plane because the worst place for turbulence is in the back of the plane. 5. Icing Before a plane takes off in cold weather, it gets covered with chemicals preventing icing from building up on the aircraft surfaces during the flight. Unfortunately, this substance works for a limited time. During landing, the plane's engines don't produce enough heat because their power drops. It can lead to the aircraft getting covered with ice, which will prevent a smooth landing. Okay, first of all, if the aircraft is getting completely covered with ice while it's flying around, you've got a lot more to worry about than whether you're going to have a smooth landing because basically icing is extremely dangerous and if it's covering the aircraft and blocking the control surfaces, that plane is likely going to fall out of the sky. That's a big problem and we're definitely not seeing that, so what they're talking about in this video isn't entirely true. Now, as a pilot sitting in the back, when we're on the ground before takeoff, if I'm noticing ice building up on the wings, I'm definitely paying attention to it, and I'm expecting the pilot to take that aircraft over to get de-iced or anti-iced. 
and it is true that that fluid only has a limited amount of time that it's useful for, but the thing you need to know is that once the plane gets airborne, those engines are producing enough power and there's other systems on board that aircraft that provide anti-ice capabilities that are going to help keep that aircraft flying and prevent ice from building up on those critical control surfaces. So this is not something you should ever have to worry about. 4. The nearest exit location. Most frequent flyers don't pay attention to the safety information presented by flight attendants, including the location of emergency exits. Pilots fly way more than any regular traveler, but they always check where those exits are and how much time it would take them to get to the closest one. Okay, I don't know any pilot that has ever actually gotten out a stopwatch and timed how long it's going to take him to get from his seat to the exit. They also try to count the number of steps or the number of rows between them and the exit because, in case of an emergency, the place is likely to be dark, filled with smoke, or even upside down. Unless a passenger has prepared before, they won't be able to find the exit, open the door, and escape. All right, that actually is pretty true. If I'm not seated in exit row, I am going to pay attention to where the closest one is and maybe count how many rows it might be to get to that exit row because that is very important, just like they talked about. 3. Landing Routine Pilots and flight attendants have to follow a strict and precise route when it comes to landing. Experienced pilots know the timing to the second. Okay, pilots don't know the timing of the landing routine to the second because the landing routine is going to change for every single airport that you're flying into. And I guarantee you that pilots sitting in the back of the plane aren't paying attention to this, and you probably shouldn't be paying attention to it either. But what they pay attention to is something different. When a plane is about to descend below 10,000 feet, the cockpit crew levels the plane. The pilot in a passenger seat can't but imagine this procedure and will go through the checklist as well. If something goes wrong, they'll notice it immediately. Okay, that's not entirely accurate because planes typically don't level off at 10,000 feet in order to run any sort of checklist as they're doing their descent for landing. Typically, the only time a plane is going to level off at 10,000 feet is if it's part of a very specific arrival procedure such as flying into New York City. And I promise you that the pilots sitting in the back aren't mentally going through the checklist like the pilots up front are. Weird smells. When a pilot is flying a plane, they can understand that everything's going as it should just by listening to the sounds the plane's making. A bizarre, unfamiliar sound is an obvious sign that something's gone wrong. While flying in a passenger seat, they can't rely on their ears because the cabin is mostly soundproof. Okay, honestly, the cabin isn't any more soundproof than the cockpit is, and most pilots that are sitting in the back usually have noise-canceling headsets on because they fly on planes so much, they just don't like hearing that noise. They like to have more peace and quiet. And the truth that no one tells you is that any noises that are coming from the engine or the landing gear, in most cases, are almost always normal. If it's something really abnormal, chances are the passengers in the back are going to hear it before the guy's sitting up front just because you're sitting closer to the engines and the landing gear. That's why pilots pay attention to the second most important sign of problems, the smell. Some smells, such as superheated bleed air, fuel, or hydraulic fluid, are easily recognizable for a professional. Typically where you're going to notice these smells is when you're sitting on the ground, especially if the APU is running, that's the auxiliary power unit, and that's the motor that provides electrical power and air conditioning before the engines are started. And pilots know all too well that such scents can hint that there are some problems with the fuel storage systems or the engine. All right, to be honest, the only smell that pilots are really concerned about when they're sitting in the back is the odor coming from the person sitting next to you because they ate burritos last night. 1. The angle of the light If the flight is during the day, an experienced pilot always pays attention to the angle between the plane window and the light coming through. They know that any difference in this angle means that the aircraft has suddenly changed direction. Weather conditions can prevent the plane from following its normal route. No, they don't pay attention to that. Most pilots that are flying in the back are usually just trying to catch a nap. The only thing I'd be worried about is if I was flying north and south and the sun went from one side of the plane to the other, that's obviously a sign that the plane has probably turned around and then I would expect to hear an announcement from the captain pretty shortly. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this other one here and I'll see you next time on Pilot Debrief.